I think we're live. Yes, we're live. So welcome to another Q&A at the end of the month. This is the month of May 2021, and this will be a podcast in June, just in case you miss it. Um, my guest today is Nancy Desmond of Memory Web, and we have a lot to cover, uh, some new things that are going on with Memory Web. And then Nancy, you and I had talked about maybe doing a whole session with demos of some of the new features, maybe in June. So I'm looking forward to that. I am too. It'll be a fun one. Yeah, I think it's going to be, it's going to be really fun because I always learn something too. It's like, even though we're in touch all the time, I get a small amount of what's going on, but obviously you have your finger on the pulse of all the new stuff. Um, so let's see, we have a few people watching. The format for this Q and A is usually people submit questions. And I do have a couple of questions from people that submitted at last month. Uh, or during the month. So I'd like to go through those. And then Nancy, let's have a conversation about what's going on with Memory Web after I answer these two questions. Sounds good. Okay. And then if anyone else has a question, please put it in, post a comment. I will see it whether you're watching on YouTube or Facebook. Um, hi, June. You're always here. It's great. All right. So Mike had a question. He said, excuse me while I read off my screen. I have a large collection of photos from my mother-in-law's school days. These photos have the names of most people in the photos identified. Isn't that great? I also have a yearbook with photos and names. How do I get these so that family searching people in these photos can find them? Well, you could create a Facebook page, Mike, a group just for people that graduated in that year. You don't say what year they graduated, but those Facebook pages for classes and class reunions are quite popular. Mm -hmm. So someone could search that on Facebook because otherwise you'd have to upload each individual picture to like Dead Fred, for instance, which is another good reunion site. I guess I would go, Mike, with the uh, Facebook page. Um, that's a good way to do it have, and then broadcast it. That's really smart. We have, for my high school, we have a, uh, a Facebook page and we post all of our information about uh, reunions or get togethers or anything on that. Yeah. So that we, be, for us, we'd love getting info there. I have, I'm part of my high school page as well. And lately people have been digging into their photo collections and posting things from like high school years. And then everybody's like, it's like, who is that person? You know, there's always people that no one can remember in the group. And it's like, oh wait, and then, then there's someone in the group who has the most phenomenal memory. She, I posted a class photograph that some like second grade teacher had given out or third grade teacher had given out for Christmas. It came in a little Christmas folder and I posted that. Um, and so we're, we're still working on who everyone is. I think some people have moved after third grade. Uh, but we're very active and I actually, I have my high school albums behind me and they're about to get scanned and go up there. That's um, cool. They need some help. <laughs> uh, Karen wrote and said, uh, she said, forgive me if this is not the appropriate forum. It is exactly the appropriate forum. That's what the Q and A at the end of the month is, is always for. Uh, our poor coal miner, Steve worker, steel worker ancestors in the 1900s took quite large wedding photos where might one find the cost of a photo like this way back when? So the early 1900s is exactly the era of the huge wedding portraits. And that's just not the wedding party. That can be everyone who ever attended the wedding. And sometimes if they had it at a place that had a stage, they're all up on the stage and the photographer is down below. So how much did it cost? You could, uh, maybe find notations as to what it cost in an advertisement in the newspaper. Uh, if you have a newspaper from that area, the, ph the photographer might have advertised or there might be a story about it. That's how I would go about it. Um, I doubt there's anything in the city directory about how much a photo cost, but I know for a fact that it's in the newspaper. Um, not always, but sometimes. And so June says, June's, June's really good. She's using that memory web subscription that she won uh, in our getting started with digital 
of photo organizing class, Nancy. Oh. I uploaded my Facebook photos to Memory Web. Now I need to put them in the albums of the tagged people. <laughs> June, you're great. Very cool. Um, I am answering questions, Kay. Yes, I am. Oh, and June found out. Here you go, Karen. June found out that some of the mining companies paid for the wedding photos. Isn't that a nice wedding gift? Maybe it was the photographer working for the mining company. That's possible as well. Um, okay, yes, I tend not to answer, uh, to submit, have people submit photographs in these Q and A's. Certainly there's an awful lot of photographs. I prefer to work one-on-one -on -one with you on that. Um, I do have a single photo consult on Wednesday mornings. Um, it's a, a, a good price for one photo, or if you have three, it's an even better deal. Or more than that, I drop the price significantly because I really, really don't want to see your family photographs in the local antique shop or on the curb is what often happens, believe it or not. Uh, I was looking at Twitter the other night and someone, someone posted a photograph and they posted all these album pages and they were like, yeah, I picked this up on a New York City curb about 15 years ago. And they're now just getting around to posting all the images of this family online, hoping someone will be able to recognize them. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. But Kay, I'd love to work with you individually. Now, Nancy, um, if you don't know Memory Web, Memory Web is the photo organizer created by genealogists for family historians. And it is a fabulous tool. It has collaborative features and it has ways for you to bulk tag and uh, Nancy and I did a whole class called Getting Started with Digital Photo Organizing that's um, quite popular. Uh, but Memory Web is just a wonderful digital photo organizer. And we're lucky to have Nancy uh, with us today talking about some of the new stuff that's going on. And there's always new stuff because what you might not know is Memory Web actually encourages you to submit things that you would like to see in their product. So there are super users, um, more super user than I am even, that are just out there. Maybe June will be a super user, Nancy. <laughs> She's really focused on it. Uh, and they submit tips to Nancy of things they would like to see. And I've submitted a couple uh, here and there of things I'd like to see. And, and some have been incorporated. I think some are on the way. Uh, let me got one more comment here, which is John. John, uh, welcome back. Uh, I recently found someone on a Facebook group for my school district who has been keeping all the principal class photos and yearbooks for the entire school district. I was able to get my class pictures with names of each student from back in the 1960s. Isn't that great? That's fabulous. That's really cool. That's really cool. Um, made a visit in person to the local antique mall yesterday on a Monday morning and realized I probably could have been going for weeks because there was no one there. And a visit to an antique mall will teach you that there is a collector for everything. Because there were things there that I thought, really? People really collect that stuff? And it, obviously they do because it was at the antique mall. Um, all right, Nancy, give us sort of like the top five things that has memory web has done in the last, when, when did we do the class, six months ago? Yeah, yeah, and actually that's perfect because I was thinking around five things. That, uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah. There's always, as Maureen said, and thank you for the nice comments about the product and the company, um, there's always new things um, and always new things in development. And um, so there's never a week that we haven't been working on something new um, to introduce. Some take longer than others, uh, and we've got some really huge features that will be coming out soon that Maureen has suggested they're uh, in that list and uh, we've been developing those for a while. So stay tuned for more info on that. Um, and I think that would be great for us to do the live demo in June um, that you were talking about. Um, but in the meantime, we have rolled out a bunch of new things um, and you may or may not have been aware of them. And one recommendation that I have for you is if you don't already follow us um, on social media or um, sign up for our newsletter, please sign up for that because we will always have the latest news and announcements there and you'll get it first. So um, one of the new things that we have been working on 
was um, our file name enhancement. So we'd had feedback and really good feedback um, that people wanted to be able to change the names of files because sometimes you get, a, yeah. <laughs> I think that was one of my suggestions. It was, it was. Um, sometimes people means Maureen and other people, but yeah. you're, they're almost always on your list. And so being able to take a file that maybe was auto-generated with a name or you just wanted to change it, um, you can now change your file name inside of memory web. Um, and we think that that's a really nice enhancement. You can also, um, along the name uh, lines of file names, you can also now sort when you're looking at all the different views in memory web, um, you, especially the photo page itself, you can now sort by file name. So, or in an album, even if you had, you know, a series of photos and you really just wanted to sort those by file name versus by the time frame or other things, you can now sort by file name as well. And that's that goes really hand in hand with being able to change those names too, in case you want to be able to manipulate the order that way. Um, so we've had a lot of good feedback on that. Um, another thing that we've, uh, um, yes. One, the yeah. only thing you have to remember is if you're going to change the file name in your memory web account, change the file name to the same thing on your computer. Yes, that's yeah. a really good point. Yes. Okay, um, next. Next, um, another thing that people have asked for is being able to add bulk captions. So sometimes you wanna have the exact same caption under every single photograph. And so now when you select multiple photos, you can actually um, change the caption or add the caption to all those photos at the same time. Um, and that was suggested by multiple people, including Sam Kinsey from Collectionaire. He thought that would be a good function. And, and part of the reason why we love hearing from everybody, just aside from it's just good to hear from people using the product in general, is that we, in our, in our, in our greatest imagination, cannot think of all the different ways that people are going to use it. And so hearing all the different ways that somebody might use the tagging features or the sorting or the sharing is really helpful for us because we may not have imagined um, what you're doing with it and think, oh, wow, that's a really great way to use the product. And we might be able to add some um, functionality and make that work even better for you. Um, so June has an interesting question for us, which is, can sure. you take the photos sorted by date and put those tagged in another album created for people? Yes. You can create multiple albums. Yes. Yeah. You, yeah, you can have infinite number of albums. So you can sort them different ways. And um, one thing, I'll go a little bit out of order of what I was going to say, but I think it, it really maps to what we're talking about here is a new thing that we can do is when you share an album with other people, um, let's say you just want to share a link to an album so that your friends and family can see photos that you've you've organized, you can, they can now see those photos and they get the ability. It's at the very bottom of the page um, on that shared view. They can sort the album the way they want to see it too. So if they want to look at it by, yeah, by file name or by, you know, uh, you know, the date that they were created or whatever, they can change it now themselves too. Yeah. Um, so that we just did last week. I don't think I even told you about that one yet. No, right. you didn't. No, you yeah. Didn't. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, Another big area is keywords. And this comes from um, lots of different folks where we have the ability to add keywords to photos. Um, but in the past, you haven't had the ability to search for those keywords inside of memory web. So we've done two things. Um, one, you can actually create an export of all your keywords and send that to yourself as a PDF. And that will come over email. And it will do a couple of things. First, it will show you all the keywords sorted alphabetically and tell you the number of photos that are um, tagged to that keyword. But then also, um, it will give you now um, on the bottom as well, starting, it gives you the keywords at the top, but on the bottom part, it will actually then list out the file names for those photos. And the really cool thing is that you can actually click those links and go directly to those photos inside the platform. Um, what also happens is when you get this uh, email that has your PDF of your keywords in it, once you click on anything, in it, there's just a link that will let you go to the website and see keywords. And then there's also those individual links that you can click. But once you click on any of those, it now becomes active inside your memory web account. Um, and there's a whole blog on that on our website if you want to learn more about all those steps that you need to take. Um, but 
just to tell you high level, once you've done that, you actually now have the additional ability to sort your photos um, and group them by the keywords. Those will be sorted alphabetically inside your member web account on the photos view. And then you can also even search. Um, there's a field where you can search if you know that flower is a keyword you added and it's maybe far down your list of photos, you can type that word in and then you can find all those photos and drill into those. Um, so that's um, some functionality that people have really been asking for for a long time. I really love the bulk tagging. You know, I just uploaded a whole bunch of slides that I scanned and I sorted them on my computer first so that when I scanned them, they were all organized by albums already. So I could move them over to memory web uh, and then went in and just bulk tagged people, just select them and put add them all. It was just so easy. So yeah. easy. There's <laughs> another thing with um, bulk tagging too that you may or may not have realized. And this falls into one of the other things I was gonna talk about. We now have, as of a week and a half, two weeks ago, tips and tricks that are gonna show up on your, um, your member web account. And so as you're doing um, different things, it'll just suggest things to you like, hey, did you know that you could do X, Y, and Z? And you can dismiss those um, notifications if you've seen it enough and you already know it. Um, you can also turn them off completely. If you're somebody who does not like that, you can go into your um, account settings and just say, don't show those to me. Um, but um, we think that we're only doing them sparingly and we think they're valuable because one of the things that you can do that you may not realize is, let's say you're on a person's page um, and you wanna be able to grab all those photos really quickly. Um, you can actually click on a photo and then do control select and then scroll all the way down the page and then click the end photo. And now all of those photos are selected and then you can bulk tag those. So if you wanted to create a super album from somebody's photos that are on their page, you can do it really quickly that way. So there's lots of different tips and tricks on things that you just probably may not realize that you're able to do. Well, I can't wait to see those pop up. Uh, Kay has a question. If you upload a photo with keywords to say, and I'm, I'm assuming Kay, what you're talking about are, is metadata, to say mm -hmm. ancestry or family tree maker, and then for some reason you re-download the photo back to your hard drive from ancestry or family tree maker, will the keywords be kept with the photos? That's a good question. I don't remember offhand whether or not ancestry preserves them or if they take information out. I think that they preserve it. Um, but I'm not 100% sure on that answer. Um, but I, I can I can find out and follow up with that information later. Yeah. Hopefully it's still there because that's obviously really important. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> obviously. So does anyone else have any questions for us? Nancy, do you have anything else you want to share? Uh, we should mention, of course, that our Unlock the Shoebox course on Roots tech is still available. It's mm -hmm. available for months uh, and it's free um, through Roots Tech. Uh, so please watch it. And we did an extensive Q&A based on that a couple of months ago. And I'm going to put that as a podcast episode. So don't miss it when it comes out on the Photo Detective podcast available wherever you get podcasts. Um, June wants to know, can you remove photos you no longer want in a people file if one is uploaded by mistake? Oh, yes. You just Definitely. delete. Delete. Mm -hmm. oh. And the cool thing, too, is that when you, if you by chance have um, photos that are uploaded in the future to your account, if that photo is in like a bulk upload and you didn't want it, you know, you deleted it, it's not going to be re uploaded because it will be flagged as a duplicate in our system. You can bypass that by saying skip the um, similarity check, but um, you don't have to worry about it getting added again by accident. Ah, so that's a good that's a good question. So my question, Nancy, this is a hard yes. one not to put you on the spot, but my computer got taken back to factory settings and I had to re-download the desktop uploader. Mm -hmm. And I want to keep syncing the files that I was syncing before, but I've been afraid to put them in the desktop uploader because I didn't want duplicates in my memory web account and have to clean it up. Yeah, and you, it shouldn't give you any duplicates. If they're the exact same files, um, it doesn't matter what the file name is. Um, it is actually looking at the image itself to see if it's similar. Okay, and great. Well, I'm going to do that this afternoon. Uh, that thing will be churning forever. 
Um, <laughs> do you have a, is this the program you used for your hometown, Lori Hines? I'm not sure what you mean by that. Um, I did not use Memory Web for uh, old PVD. And then Kay wants to know how to sign up for your newsletter. So Nancy, do you have a link you can share on how yes. to sign up for your new newsletter? And put that in the in the chat. Yep, I'll type it in there now. They also have an amazing social media feed on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, so if you are on Facebook or Twitter, you can follow Memory Web and they share a lot of tips and tricks on social media. So please join in the fun. Obviously, social media is a, did it, there you good. June, 6,000 photos on Facebook. <laughs> Naughty, that's a lot. <laughs> I would be, I would, I think I would exceed that June. So don't worry, I wouldn't worry about it. Cause remember it's from the whole time you've been on Facebook. Goodness gracious. And Nancy, that link did not appear. Oh, it didn't? Oh, no. Let me see. Oh, I might've put it in the private chat. Let's see. Oh yeah, there it is. Hold on, I'll get it. I'll grab it. Okay. Comments. Here we go. This is the sign up for the Memory Web newsletter. Comes out what once a month? Once a month. Yep. Uh, are there levels for use? Small, like a birthday, or large for surname studies? No, it's one account. Mm -hmm. on memory web it's just one account so okay. however you want to use it okay. like and i have all my work photos in there as well and what the funniest part is the, the facial recognition often just pops up people from my work research photo collection like is this your you know is this this person no but they may look like them um so mm -hmm. always make sure when you use the facial recognition that you are careful about what you accept mm-hmm uh, anything else? Does anyone have any other questions for us? The Q and A's are pretty short and sweet. Um, we go for about 20 minutes or 30 minutes. I can always add more stuff in. Oh, people are subscribing and liking your Facebook page, Nancy. Fantastic, thank you. <laughs> so can I copy my photos from Facebook to Memory Web to preserve them? You can sync it. Yes, you can. I have not turned that on um, yet because I'm afraid of how many are actually there. And we'll grab um, the metadata that they allow us to take, which I believe um, at this point is caption, date, and location. They used to allow us to grab people's names, um, but that functionality was cut off a few years ago. So we're dependent on the platform, but we'll take whatever you already um, had in there that is available to us and apply it to your photos. And what would be sort of a maximum number of pictures in a memory web account? Uh, Asking for a friend. Yeah, no, that's a great question. Um, so it holds up to a terabyte. Um, we oh. can. We've never had anybody even hit close to that, and that is about five hundred thousand photos, give or take. Oh, then I'm good. I'm yeah. good. I just I I uploaded all of these photos the other day, and then I looked at the total number of photos, and I was like, that's a lot of photos. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, does Memory Web do any enhancements on the photos uploaded? We do you not. Can, so, you can yeah. still do some editing on your on your phone, though, I mean, right? The I, iOS yeah. app. On iOS, we have the ability to crop, rotate, and um, do some um, basic filtering. Uh, we are adding that to the website and Android versions. It's in our plans for this year. We just haven't rolled that out yet. I think were we talking about June seventeenth, Nancy, as a date for the webinar? I believe so. So if you're on my newsletter list or Nancy's or on our social media, watch mm -hmm. for it. It will be a free webinar on how to use memory web. And we'll probably, I'll probably put the course on sale um, after that webinar. That'll be the thing I'll do. And I believe there's going to be some big stuff. We can oh, show. I know what you wanted to address today, Nancy. And June's question prompted me, which is, I guess I can upload my Google photos without worry. Okay, so that's that, what you were going to talk about. That was that we were going to address the elephant in the room, which is the Google Photos change. 
Yeah, there's a big change coming and people may or may not be aware of it. But as of June 1st, I believe the date is, there is no longer going to be free unlimited photos um, at Google Photos. And uh, I think the one exception is if you have a Pixel phone, but I don't think that that phone is actually very common. Um, and after that, then you will get your 15 gigabytes um, for free um, from Google. But after that, if you can fit your photos um, on an ongoing basis. So anything that you already have in Google Photos is grandfathered in. So it's for new photos coming in. Um, and once you hit um, your 15 um, gigabytes, which I think is not just for photos, I think it cuts across all the things that you're storing on Google, then like you drive. would go, I believe so. Then I believe you'd go into, uh, I'm not 100% clear on that, but I, I believe that's the case. And then after that, you would have to go into a paid platform. Um, however, they do have, um, and it may not be that big of an issue for folks. It may give you a year or two of runway before you actually would even hit that number Go on an ongoing basis um, since your photos are grandfathered in. Um, but they do allow you um, to take all of your photos out now and actually with metadata um, using Google Takeout. Um, the metadata is a separate file though. Um, it's not injected inside your photo file. So um, it has a very limited, um, um, ability to be used and read by other platforms, but at least it's still there. Um, and we have some interesting um, news coming up with that <laughs> in the future as well. Right. Stay tuned for June. Stay tuned for <laughs> the June. The uh, June metadata thing, thing we're going to do. Um, okay. Linda has a question. What is the ideal DPI, PPI you should use to upload to memory web? I mean, preservation mm -hmm. quality is 600 to 1200. And I know they're huge files because I just did all the slides mm -hmm. at, at like, you know, 600. Uh, but what would you suggest for memory web? Um, as big as you want. I think, uh, I'm trying to remember our limit, but it is using our desktop uploader. That is the thing that allows you to take your really high resolution photos. Um, we are able to get really huge, huge files. It's either I think one and a half to two gigabytes in size um, and get those uploaded at a time. Um, TIFFs, whatever you have, raw files. And we'll create a version online for you to view that that is lower resolution just so it loads better, um, but we'll always preserve your original file. So Kay wants to know, uh, Nancy, I think you said the metadata it collects are just date and location, not title, subject, tags, or comments. That must be when you're transferring your images from Facebook into uh, memory web, that it just transfers over date and location. I thought um, you said caption. It does do caption, uh, not the title, subject, tags, or comments. Uh, you can get an export from Facebook with that information, but as a sidecar file as well. And we don't get that directly in memory web. Okay. Does that answer that? Yeah. Can Amazon uh, photos be uploaded? We do not have a direct connection to those, but if you are able to download those, and you certainly can. So any kind of photo, it's just whether or not we have a direct connection to the platform or not. And then June says that Google actually gives you an estimated time before you fill the 15 gig based on past use. I can tell That's you, June, I'm already way past that, I think, because I have a paid account already on Drive. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Um, all right. Well. We've gone to exactly 30 minutes. Um, join us in June, watch for the announcements. We look forward to seeing you. I'll probably host it on Crowdcast um, and I gotta get all that set up and get the promotions out there, Nancy. Uh, but I look, forward, I look forward to presenting with you again in June and talking all about memory fun. web and, and pushing <laughs> the limits of my account a little bit more, I think, before that. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. This has been really fun, um, as usual. And Nancy, I will see you soon. All right. Sounds good. Thank you, everybody. Bye.